Hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Simon Byrne. I'm the lead software engineer on the Klima project, where we're building a next generation climate model in Julia. If you'd like to hear more about that, please see my JuliaCon talk from last year, or visit our website. Today, I'll be speaking about MPI.jl, a package for parallel programming in Julia. So what is MPI? Uh, well, it stands for the Message Passing Interface, and it's an approach to parallel programming based on having multiple independent processes which communicate between themselves via messages. It's distinct from other models of parallel programming, notably, such as the one in the Julius distributed package, in that there's no single controller process. Um, programs written, this, written using MPI typically use a single program multiple data model where all the processes execute the same program and vary what they do based on their input data. It's a standard with multiple implementations. Open MPI and MPitch are the two most common ones, uh, but there's many derivatives of these, often um, built, written by specific vendors targeting their hardware. It's also very old by computing standards. Um, the original version dates from 1994. The current version has approximately has several hundred functions, uh, though most applications stick to a very small subset of these. MPI.jl, uh, which provides the Julia bindings to MPI, is also a rel relatively old package by Julia standards. It was started by Lucas Wilcox in July of 2012, only a few months after Julia was announced. Um, and since then, it's had 48 contributors. Um, my own involvement started last year and it maps fairly closely to the C API with some additional Julia niceties. You don't need to bother about specifying things like buffer length or data types. Uh, it will automatically generate custom data types and operators for you. Um, and if you're using a CUDA or MPI library, you can pass cool arrays directly to any of, to any of the functions. Um, it still only exposes a fairly small part of the full MPI interface. Um, part of the reason it's had so many contributors is that users add functionality as they need it. So here's an example of a simple MPI program. Uh, we start by initializing the MPI library and determining the necessary information, such as the total number of processes and the index of the current process. And we build an array of data that is going to form our buffer for the communication. Next, we perform our communication operations. So we use I send and I receive. The I send will send the last element of the buffer to the next rank in order, and I receive will use the first element of the buffer as a storage for the incoming message. Now these are asynchronous operations, so we can now do other computation, and when we're ready for the result, we call MPI wait all, which will uh, block until these communications are completed, and then we can print the result. To actually run the program, we need to use a MPI launcher program, in this case called MPI exec. And so this get, takes particular arguments saying the number of ranks we used to use, wish to use, as in addition to the actual program we're going to execute, in this case, the Julia program and it, the, the script. So what are the advantages of using MPI? Um, well, firstly, it's extremely widely supported. Uh, every supercomputer in the world will have an MPI implementation down to single workstations. Um, it's a very easy way to leverage fast, low latency network hardware, such as InfiniBand. Um, and it's a proven model that's scalable to hundreds of thousands of processes. Um, it's asynchro the asynchronous operations are a very convenient mechanism for allowing overlapping communication and computation. And it generally is a pretty good fit for a lot of scientific problems. I mean, the classic example is a PTE solver where you define your spatial domain and your processes, and you then use MPI to communicate the boundary, information to the boundaries. It also provides a fairly good mechanism for doing parallel uh, read-write operations. For a second example, I'll show how we can use MPI for a distributed variance computation. Now, there's a couple of different approaches here. Um, the simplest one is to use, first compute a global mean using an MPI or reduce. So this computes will compute the sum of a quantity over all the MPI ranks, and then redistribute the, the total to all, to all of them. We then use this uh, sum to compute the mean, 
and the square difference from the mean, the sum of square differences from the mean on each rank and reduce that back to a single process, rank zero, um, and use that to print the result. The downside of this approach, obviously, is it requires two separate rounds of communication. A simpler option is to use the sum of squares formula for computing the variance. Uh, this requires only one reduce operation, where we compute the sum, the sum of squares, and the length of the vectors. Uh, the downside is it's very numerically unstable. An improved version is to use the custom data types and oper reduce operators provided by MPI. So we do this first by defining a summary struct, which contains our necessary data for each rank, in this case, the mean, the variance, and the length of the vector. And then we define a reduction operator, which we use to combine them. And so this contains the necessary information for computing the mean of the pooled mean, as well as the pooled variance. And then we can pass those to our custom, to MPI reduce, which will then use the custom reduction operator to compute our, our uh, shared variance. So why might you not want to use MPI? Well, it's very much designed around batch workloads. There's no interactivity. You don't get a REPL session. Um, and it's very difficult to add or remove processes during your computation. Uh, it's completely distinct from Julia's distributed standard library. There is the MPI clusters managers package, um, which tries to do this, but it has to make a lot of compromises along the way. It really is just a communication library. There's no distributed data structures or facilities for locking resources, etc. cetera. Um, and most of the operations require the message lengths to be known on both sides, which makes it difficult to use with variable size data or streaming data. And finally, there's no fault tolerance or error recovery. Um, and so if something goes wrong, you just have to start again from scratch. Some of the challenges along the way is that the biggest challenges are to deal with the MPI binaries themselves. Uh, the MPI standard doesn't specify an ABI. You have the type definitions and the constants vary between implementations. Currently, we try to detect the ABI. Um, and if that doesn't work, we fall back on a generated C script that outputs all the necessary information. Um, for a long time, you had to provide your own binary, uh, but thanks to Mozi Giordano, we now have a binary builder provided binaries uh, using mpitch or Microsoft MPI. Uh, the users on HPC systems will probably want to override uh, to provide their own uh, that can leverage uh, fast networking hardware. Uh, downstream binaries are still a problem, uh, and this is something we don't have a good solution for yet. Looking forward, I'd love to add more functionality and contributions are welcome. Thank you.